Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic, a daily series happening every single day all month. In this video, we are continuing with month two on operations and relations of sets. Today we're looking at the operation known as intersection, answering the question, what is the intersection of two sets? Now, Intersection is an operator in set theory. In this video, we are covering relative intersections between two sets or classes, for example, A intersection B, not to be confused with absolute intersections, an intersection on a single set or class, for example, the intersection of C. We will cover that, but we're going to cover it in a future video. So if you're looking for that, go look for that video. Now, the intersection of two classes is the class that includes all of the members which are present in both classes. We will represent an intersection in set theory with this kind of upside down U, because it's in some ways the opposite of a union. To find the intersection of two sets, we simply create a set with all of the elements that appear in both sets. So if we had the set the class A being defined as the class of B, C, and D, and the class E being defined as the class of B, the class of C, and A, then the intersection of A and E would be the class of B, because B is the only member that is in both sets. And this is assuming that all of these are separate classes, that none of them equal each other and none of them equal the null set. Note that the set of C is not identical to C. That's why we have the set of C in one list and C in the other list, and they don't correspond. C is a member of A, and the class of C is a member of E. These are different classes. One way to think of an intersection is that it, is, it includes the area of a Venn diagram that is shaded in the image to the right. Basically, anything in both classes is included in the intersection of those classes. Here's some more examples to clarify, where A doesn't equal B, doesn't equal C, and so on and so forth. And none of them equal the null set. The intersection of the class of A and the class of B is just the null set. They don't share anything. The intersection of the class of A and B and the class of B and C is simply the class of B. It's the only thing that they share. The intersection of the class of the null set and the class of B, E, F, D, E, F, G, and the null set is the class of the null set. Because they do share a member, that member is the null set. And the intersection of the null set and the universal set is simply the null set. So the intersection of the null set and pretty much anything is going to be the null set because you have to be a member of both sets and nothing is a member of the null set. And for something a little more complicated, the intersection of the class, the null set, the class of the null set A and B, and the class of the class of the null set and A and B is simply equal to the class of the class of the null set A and B. The formal definition of an intersection that we'll use is as follows. Note that this is almost identical to the union definition, just replacing the disjunction with a conjunction. So for all classes A, B, and C, the statement the intersection of A and B is C is defined as for all sets X, X is a member of C, if and only if X is a member of A and X is a member of B. We're gonna call this relative intersection definition in proofs. Up next, we're going to take a look at what is the difference of two sets, another relative operation. But before we get to that, give these a try, and we'll have answers at the end of the next video. So our class definitions are the same as we had in the last video, once again assuming that all of these are unique classes, none of them are equal to each other. And our exercises are as follows. What's the intersection of A and C, B and D, D in itself, and A and B? And if you want the answers to yesterday's problems, here they are. So the union of A and B, these are the same class definitions, so you can refer to it here if you want to try it out. The union of A and B is A, B, C, D, and E, because all of those are contained in at least one of those classes. The union of A and C is just B, C, and D, which is also the same as A, 
So note that C, because it is a subclass of A, the union of it and A simply equals A. The union of B and D equals A, E, and F. So that means that if because A and E are in B and E and F are in D, they combine to get A, E, and F, and we eliminate the E's, the double E's, because we don't need duplicates in a set. And the union of C and itself is just C, which is the class of C and D. Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org. Go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to catch all these videos and catch the next video with the answers to the exercises that we just had. And stay skeptical, everybody.